Hello everyone, it's going to be a super hot day here in Tennessee, but that just means the honey is flowing. So we're going to rob one of dad's honeybees right here because it is full of beautiful honey. So I've got my work clothes on, my hair's pulled back, I'm ready to go. We're going to suit up and then we're going to see what's inside and just how many quart jars we're going to get. Okay, now dad was here explaining what we're going to do with this little contraption. Um, go ahead and explain what this is, dad. Okay, this is a bee smoker. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's used to uh, keep the bees calm and disrupt their communications uh, so they can't send out an alarm and get all hostile and start stinging you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to put your... Uh, start your fire down low in the smoker okay get it going good and then cram a bunch more shavings on top of it mm -hmm. if you light it on top when you uh, puff the smoke out you'll be shooting flame out the end of the smoker and you'll kill a bunch of your bees okay send your wings out so always start your fire down low okay and then cram a bunch of shavings on top of the fire and that's just regular wood shavings that you got at Lowe's? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can use the cedar shavings or yellow pine, either one. Okay. Now what we're going to do is use the smoker to drive as many down in the hive as possible uh, so we can get them out of the way and uh, get the uh, honey frames out. We'll shake, what we can't drive down into the hive, we'll shake off and brush out. One weighs at least 10 pounds. That's wow. a ton of pounds. That's a lot of honey. Beautiful honey. I'll brush them off. This usually makes them uh, real irritated when you brush them. <laughs> that's the reason I'm wearing my veil. But that's a super soft brush, right? That doesn't really hurt the right. bees or anything. It's real. A uh, fine brush, it's, it, it don't hurt the bees at all. If you, as long as you brush gentle. Look at all that gorgeous honey and the beeswax too. That's going to be saved. We're going to do something with that one too. So we've got three of them inside. Now we're going to start the uncapping process. So all this little beeswax right here at the front is gonna have to be cut off so that we can sling that honey out. And this is one of the things I'm kind of <laughs> really excited about. Oh wow, look at all that glistening honey in there. But I'm really excited about this because this beeswax can be used for all kinds of beauty products, which I'm hoping to be able to make. 
Now, Dad, um, I did have one question that I thought some people might be interested in. Okay. Um, now, there's no chance of little baby bees being in these frames, right? Absolutely not. I have a queen excluder mm -hmm. that keeps the queen down in the brood box. Okay. So she, there's no way she can get up here to lay eggs in the honey. Okay. So no little uh, baby bees was harmed in this process. <laughs> yeah. I don't harm my babies. <laughs> but all that wax is going to be really, really fun to work with. So we will actually let this sit in the strainer and drain overnight. So we'll actually uh, get even more honey out of uh, the little bits and pieces that are down here. Uh, and then... What's left over will be just the pure wax. And now we have the first one all done. And oh, look. Ready to, ready to put in the Wow. And we've got uh, basically, what is this, Dad? A centrifugal extractor? Yeah. Yeah, so as we turn it, the handle, we're going to be able to gently turn the frames that are in here and it's going to sling the honey onto the sides, drip all the way down, and come out um, into this strainer and into the pot. Now, you can get two in here, right, Dan? Yes, that's a two frame. Okay. I'm thinking of upgrading to a four frame. Um, after seeing all this, honey, I think we're going to have to. <laughs> yeah. And you've always got to wait till they're at least, I wait till they're at least... 90% capped before I take, uh, before I do the extracting because if the honey's not cured, if most of the honey's not cured, it will spoil. Oh, okay. The bees have to cure it and cap it before you can extract it. Now you can see a lot of honey's going into the cappings. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's why we've got the strainer here and this bowl, because we do not want to waste any drop of it. Yeah. These bees worked very hard to make this for us, <laughs> so <laughs> we want to make sure and respect that. So I wanted to try a little bit of this um, before we extract it uh, from the frames. Oh my gosh. That is going to be so hard not to just like eat with a spoon. <laughs> that is phenomenal. We're going to be able to make so many wonderful things out of this and it really can't hold a candle to the store-bought honey that you get like in the little bears and stuff like that. This is the pure stuff. Is We don't have one, uh, an extractor with the electric motor on it. <laughs> no. You've got to do it by hand. <laughs> yep. And it'll take between five and ten minutes of steady cranking to get all the honey out. It's, uh, it's very tiring. <laughs> wow. So we're yeah. actually going to take turns. Yeah. And, <laughs> Well, later on, we'll upgrade to a uh, deluxe electric <laughs> model. <laughs> well, here we go. Okay, that actually didn't take long at all. This side is extracted, as you can see, but guess what? Turn it around, Dad. <laughs> we gotta do the other side. <laughs> so we're gonna turn it around, put it back in, and start cranking all over again. Now, this is one of the things you gotta watch out for if you're needing to do the frames, you know, a few at a time. Look at all the bees. They came back up here to check on what's going on and probably trying to figure out uh, where their honey went. So <laughs> dad's going to have to drive them back down into the beehive all over again.
And while dad's busy getting some of those frames out, I wanted to show you just part of their garden and what's come up so far. So we've got a lot of beans. And if you're wondering what this is right here, <laughs> me and Mitch had made a chicken wire ghost for Halloween. And so we hated to get rid of her because she's so cool. So we made a garden ghost out of her. Now I did plant some beans around, so hopefully the vines will start going up her skirt. Um, so she'll kind of be a bean trellis also, which I think is gonna look really cool. We've got some uh, popcorn this year. We're gonna try that. And all of that right there is different kinds of heirloom tomatoes. We've got all kinds of really exciting varieties that we've never tried, like some Mark Twain, some Abe Lincolns. We've got some Black Beauties and pineapple plants out there. So really excited to see what that's gonna look like. And of course, you always have to have a zucchini and a squash. We've got all these beets coming up. Mom wanted two rows this year because she's going to uh, can some and pickle them. We've got a few onions that came up. Um, the seed didn't do too well. I think it was just us missing the time that you need to plant them. We've got some cucumbers coming up, so they'll be crawling up these um, trellises here. And we've got two rows of potatoes that's already coming up. So we're really excited to see what this garden's going to bring us. And of course we're excited because we know the bees are going to be all over this pollinating it for us. I caught you! Oh, I can't stay out of this, honey. I know, it tastes wonderful and it's made the kitchen smell so good. I'm gonna try my hand at this. I don't know how well this is gonna go. This is the first time I've tried this. Oh wow, look how dark that honey is. So we got us a little straggler in the house. So dad is going to carefully catch this little bee <laughs> and take her back outside where she belongs. Wow, look at all those bees clustered to the front. They came out to kind of get away from that smoke and now that the smoke's gone, they're all trying to cluster back in. I just wanted to show you here what a packed out hive looks like. This is how you get a whole bunch of honey by building your bee population up real good and strong. That way you get a lot of honey. Well, and you can see how, how good these bees are. Very gentle bees. I don't, I'm not even in a bee suit or veil or nothing and I can get right up on them. They're uh, carnelian bees. They're very, Style, very gentle bees. Uh, what are you doing, Lita? Uh, nothing. Oh, yeah? <laughs> can't stay out of it either, can you? No, I really can't. <laughs> okay, we are almost done, but I wanted to show you all that honey pouring out of this uh, extractor. Now you can see some bits of um, the wax, the comb is still in the honey, which is why we have the strainer right here going into this pot. But look at this, the pot is already, uh, the honey in the pot is already touching the bottom of the strainer. So we're going to actually need to switch um, pots because there's so much coming out of here. So we're gonna close this off and start us a whole new pot. Look at all that beautiful honey going in this jar. Gosh, th I think that's the prettiest honey we've gotten ever. Goodness. Look at that. Now this is raw, unfiltered, unrefined, just straight out of the hive. And that's the way it's the best. <laughs> <laughs>
This is liquid ambrosia right here. This stuff is uh, local raw pure honey like this is selling for like $20, $25 a quart now. And wasn't it honey that was the food of the gods? That's what it was considered. <laughs> Nectar of the gods. All right, so that was the last of the frames. Dad's gonna drive the bees down just a little bit more so when he puts those frames in, he doesn't crush any. We'll put those back in and they're gonna clean them up real nice, make some more honeycombs, and probably in two to three weeks, they're gonna fill these again. So we're done with the hive, but not with the honey. We're gonna go back in and start filling up all those jars. Now what's he doing? <laughs> now daddy, you can't drink right out of that jar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it's a few days later, we've rusted up from all of that really hard work that we did. We ended up getting about 12 jars of honey. So we were thrilled. And of course you notice that dad has more beehives than that one. So hopefully we'll be getting even more honey. But I decided to make a really cool looking treat with some of that honey. So let me show you what we're going to make. I found this really fun cookbook. Now this is a video game, The Elder Scrolls. Um, my husband's played it, I haven't, but how could you pass up a cookbook that looks like this? And it is really fun. It's got lots of great stuff in it, uh, and it deserves its own deep dive. So we're gonna be coming back to this cookbook um, to do a more thorough review um, than what we're doing right now. Um, but I wanna go ahead and start this honeycomb brittle that's going to require one cup of this beautiful golden honey that we um, extracted. So I'm really excited. I've never made anything like this. It looks really fun and it's supposed to look like honeycomb. So I thought this would be really appropriate. Now the recipe says that you really need to have everything pre-measured because it goes fast once you get to a certain stage. We've got our cup of sugar, we've got our honey, we've also got our tablespoon each of butter and baking soda. This is the ingredient that's going to cause all the bubbles and fizzles that's gonna create this little honeycomb look. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got our thermometer ready and I think we are good to go. We're gonna start at the stove. We've got our one cup of sugar. And now, one little problem, the cookbook said a splash of apple cider vinegar. Well, you know, kind of what is a splash? <laughs> I don't know. So I've got a little bit here of what I think will approximate a splash. We'll put that in. And then, we've got the best part. Oh, all that beautiful honey. So here's a little mistake I didn't notice until I actually started this. This says to mix sugar, honey, water, and apple cider vinegar. But where's the water? There's salted butter, baking soda, sugar, honey, 
Ugh. And it's not listed in here either. So that is a mistake that you'll have to keep in mind with this cookbook. And I'll look through some of the others and see if there's any, you know, more. But I looked up a couple recipes online for this and one of them put about half the amount of water um, that they did to honey. We've got one cup of honey. I'm going to put a half a cup of water. This is scary. <laughs> and we'll see if that's enough, not enough. I don't know. Um, so this may not turn out as great as I hoped, but we're going to keep going. Um, hope that's enough water and you know it's candy it's got sugar in it so I mean surely to goodness it should turn out um, fairly tasty <laughs> okay pretty sure I got another little problem I don't think this candy thermometer is working very well um, it's obviously boiling here and it's not even getting to 200 on this one I have another thermometer here. I know this is a meat thermometer, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, check and see. And when I stuck that in, it went all the way back around past this 220. So this is hot. Uh, not really sure what's going on with that candy thermometer, but that may also be why I had trouble with that fudge too. So I'm gonna have to look into maybe a more professional heavy duty thermometer. So since I can't really get a good reading, I think that this is probably, according to this thermometer, ready. I'm just going to make the decision to go ahead and pull it. We'll see what happens. All right, now things are going to escalate quickly according to the recipe. You take it off the heat, it might actually go over this pan. That's what I'm afraid of. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my um, prepared um, cookie sheet right here. We're going to add our butter. I'm going to quickly give that a melt. And now here it comes what the recipe said would be the wild part. We're going to get this baking soda in and it should bubble like crazy. frothy okay oh wow <laughs> okay <laughs> and now we just quickly pour it onto this pan and leave it alone and there that baking soda is doing its job by bubbling through and creating all that honeycomb look um, by making those air pockets now you can see the bubbling has already calmed down, so now we're just going to let this sit here and cool down. It should harden enough to where we can break this apart into pieces. Okay, Mitch is out for lunch. Uh, he's wanting to try this. I'm a little worried for two reasons. One, they said you can just break it apart and we can't even though it's completely cooled it's a little sticky um and also <laughs> there was a warning on this thing uh oh yeah so if you have any kind of dental work do oh. not eat this i'm scared it's going to pull my fillings out um but we're going to go ahead and try very carefully um <laughs> to try it with each I don't even know how. How do I do this? Okay, now you got one piece and it does kind of look like a honeycomb. Yeah. So go ahead and try it and just watch your fillings. <laughs> Is it really sticky? It's very sticky. <laughs> oh no. Like, I think I just replaced a tooth. <laughs> How's the taste though? It is very good. Oh, okay. Like, very good. I just don't know how to eat it. Yeah, well, yeah, taffy is always kind of, I mean, it's kind of like a peanut brittle in a way. Um, so, yeah, like I said, if you just, you know, if you have bridges, um, any kind of crowns, dental work, I would skip this one. <laughs> Even though it yeah. tastes really The taste is really good. Like, honestly, like, I almost wonder if you could crumble it. And like add it to, like as a 
like it's like a toffee almost. Yeah, it is toffee. You know what I mean, like add it to like an ice cream or something along those lines, or even add it to like another food. Yeah. Like a muffin with toffee in it or something. Would that be would be really good. Really interesting. Okay, go By ahead. By itself, and, it's a little difficult. Go ahead and break me off a piece, and let's see. Oh, oh, wow! Now that's a good one. So it is breaking apart like it's supposed to. Yeah. And look at all those bubbles. It's got a nice honeycomb look to it, just like the picture. So I think we did okay. Let me go ahead and try this and see what I think. All right, here goes nothing. Mm. Oh, it goes stick. <laughs> it's very good though, and it kind of slowly dissolves in your mouth. So, I don't think you'd have too much to worry about if you have fillings. If you kind of just let, let it dissolve instead of like trying to really chomp on it. But you can really taste that honey because that is really coming through. So, okay, good. Not exactly what I um, expected. I'm a little bit disappointed that the recipe had that misprint in there. But overall, I think it turned out pretty good. And uh, yeah, it's got like a nice kind of sweet, salty flavor going on that shines through. Thanks for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed that look into how we extract our honey and how my dad uh, robs his bees when the time comes. And remember, we are going to do a deeper dive into this cookbook. We'll pick an entree, try it, and see what we think. A pretty cool cookbook, and I think it deserves a video on its own. So we'll be looking at that again soon. Thanks for watching this one. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.